This video carries on from the continuity of CPC and polarity test that we carried out on our radial socket circuit here at Lineside Studios. Once again, we're going to use our Mattrell MI3125 BT multifunction tester in order to carry out this insulation resistance test. We can see in the distribution board we've still left it with the line, the neutral and protective conductor disconnected. And we've ensured that the circuit has all loads removed and all our socket fronts are in the on position. So the insulation resistance test gets to the furthest point of each outlet when we carry it out. However, before I can start the work, I'm going to need someone to carry out that work. So I need to find out where Rick is. Rick, it's often overlooked. That circuit protective conductor we've currently got disconnected needs returning and connecting to the earth bar. And he says here, it's essential the incoming earth is connected to the MET, as well as our earthing conductor is present and any other protective bonding conductors before carrying out the insulation resistance test. Yeah. Before we get into anything too technical though, let's have ourselves a biscuit. What have we got here? An extremely chocolatey biscuit selection from Tesco's. Would you like one? Oh, love one. Ah, thank you, Rick. Yes, thank Delicious. you. So let's set up our Mattrell MI3125 BT tester in order to carry out this insulation resistance test. I've powered it up and it shows us a tester that we were last carrying out. We were doing the R1 plus R2 continuity test of this radial socket circuit. I need to scroll through to insulation resistance using this button here. We can see the word next. Scroll through, next one's ring final circuit, which we don't need. And then we're on to the insulation resistance test identified with ISO. And you notice on the top row there, you've got the voltage being passed through the circuit during the test being 250 volts DC. And we want to change that to 500 volts DC. We do that by pressing this button here. We'll talk about when we can use 250 in future videos. Now I'm going to change that. I can go down to 100 or I can go up. So if I dropped it down, I could go to 100 or I can go up to 500 volts and 1000 volts. So I want to stick with the 500 volts DC for this test. What is fantastic is this end screen here, which sets the minimum passed value for this test. So you can set this yourself, and I've set this at one meg ohm. So anything below one meg ohm would show as a fail, anything above would show as a pass. Again, if I move to it, I can set it considerably lower or considerably higher. Well, we're gonna set it at its maximum, its maximum being 200. So anything that we get 200 or greater will be a pass. Anything below that would show as a fail. But that's really good, isn't it? Imagine you've gone into an installation, you looked at previous reports and saw that circuits were hovering around, say, 10 mega ohm. You could set that at the point of which you wanted to show whether it'd be a pass or fail, and you could see deterioration over time. So we've set the instrument up. It might be now that you want to, to look at the help screen. Okay, in order to work out what you need to do with your lead. So if I press the help screen, it's showing the adapter needs connecting to the instrument, which we'll do in a second. And it shows the fact that we've got to connect our neutral and protective earth leads together for this test and then have our line lead separately. So let's do that next. So in the top of the machine, we're going to slide across in order that we can put in our adapter. We pop that into place. As we drop back down, we've just seen there that these leads need piggybacking. So we've got the, the neutral one and the protective earth one joined together and our line lead. And I'm gonna use my crocodile clips in order to carry out this test. So I pop those into position. And now we need to come back out of this screen. We do that by pressing the help button once again. And now we're back to where we started. And now we could perhaps test the leads are in good condition. So in other words, I wanna prove that these haven't broken. There's no snap, say, where it connects into the actual connection for the crocodile clip or they're damaged. So by simply joining the two leads together, okay, we should find that we now have a dead short, okay? So that would give us obviously zero and it will show a fail, but it'll actually show that we have continuity or a completed lead before carrying out this test. So press the test button. We should expect it to fail. We've got zero is what we expected. We see we've got an X to say we failed. And what I really like is we've got this LED light here to tell me that I have a result that I wasn't happy with. Remember my result had to be 200 mega ohms or greater in order to get a pass. So that proves to me then that the leads are in good working order. And now we're ready to carry out the test on the installation. It's time to set Rick to work. And we absolutely love this Matrells tester with the magnet on the back, we've attached it to the trunk in. And now we've got to put that circuit protective conductor into the earth bar. Remembering we've got to confirm that there is a source earth into the installation, the earthing conductor is present and any protective bonding. And because it's going to stay in situ, we're going to return it to a required torque setting using our Weha Torque screwdriver. 
Well, first of all, we're gonna test between our live conductors. It doesn't matter which order we do these in. So we're gonna go between our line connection and our neutral. And when we press our test button, we can see we get a reading greater than the machine can read. So our reading there is greater than 999 mega ohms. Next, we're gonna test between our line conductor and the earth bar where our CPC is connected. And once again, when we press our test button, we can see it's greater than machine can read, greater than 999 mega ohm. Next, we're gonna test between our protective conductor and our neutral connection. And once again, when we press our button, we can see we get that reading once again. But what I really like here is the fact that we get that tick to say that we've got a reading that works acceptable, as well as that visual indicator through that green LED. Remember, we set it at 200 meg ohms as our fail point. Rick shuffled off to squirrel away a few more of those biscuits, but I've got a question for you. Are you always returning that protective conductor to the earth bar before carrying out your insulation resistance test? Or like me, maybe in the past you've been guilty of doing it with all three conductors disconnected. I'd love your feedback on that below. You might be looking at this bag here and wondering what the MI3125BT tester from Matrell comes with. In order to see that, check out the video on screen just there.